ask anyone from whom man came, and you will receive an immediate answer from a monkey. But to the question from whom, for example, a dog and a cat or a horse originated, no one will give a concrete answer. Therefore, in this issue we decided to look into the long evolutionary path of a domestic animal such as a horse. So let's move with you to the Mesozoic era in the Jurassic period. But what is it the descendants of the horse already existed there? Let's fast forward even earlier, during the Triassic period, to determine the initial point of origin of the future horse. Before you is the Triassic period, the basis for the origin of all life in the world. Then the first ancestors of dinosaurs began to appear. At the same time, the ancestors of mammals began to appear, namely, the first non-avian dinosaurs. Then two very important and different species appeared. These are Theria and Prototherium. Oviparous animals eventually evolved from Prototherium. An example of this is the platypus and the echidna. We are mostly interested in Theria. Placental Theria. Many species of viviparous animals originated from them. The heroes of our issue, modern horses, also belong to them. The order of Perissodactyls in the Mesozoic contained early representatives of many species of animals that live on our planet today. These are ancient families of cattle, deer, camels, llamas, hippos, rhinoceroses, pigs, and giraffes. One of the first ancestors of horses was the genus Gobiconodon. These small mammals, weighing no more than 5 kilograms and measuring 50 centimeters in size, lived at the turn of the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. In appearance, this mammal resembled a large, massive opossum. This animal ate a variety of vegetation and small insects. The animal world continued to evolve and now small animals called the Ohippus appeared. The Ohippus was somewhat reminiscent of a small deer, only the hooves had several toes. Over time, all these toes fused into one hoof. The ancestors ate grass, leaves, fruits and other plant foods. Interestingly, the name Eohippus is translated as first horse. Subscribe to the channel, put your finger up and leave a comment. If this is your first time on our channel, be sure to subscribe. And also don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss new and interesting releases from our channel. The species Eohippus and Chirocotherium existed for about two tens of millions of years, from the Eocene to the Oligocene. They settled over vast territories of America and Eurasia, where the Bering Strait is now located. In ancient times, the two continents were connected by a narrow isthmus. Hyrocotherium and Eohippus traveled along this bridge. The little horses had plenty of enemies. This is precisely why nature rewarded them with strong legs, which kept them in the swamp and helped them escape from predators. The next stage of evolution was Mesohippus, Parahippus, and Ancotherium. The Miocene era has arrived. It became much colder. Instead of swampy impenetrable jungles, broad-leaved forests grew, and endless steppes and meadows spread out. In order to survive, all branches of the horse family had to change their diet. Juicy fruits and shoots are a thing of the past. They were replaced by dry and hard grass, this led to changes in the chewing apparatus. Enamel ridge-shaped irregularities appear on the surface of the mesohippus teeth, and the height of the crowns increased. More advanced jaws helped chew hard food more thoroughly. The soft, swampy soil was replaced by solid ground. This became the reason for the improvement of limbs in new species of ancient equity. About 10 million years ago, horses already reached a height of almost one meter. Merigippus developed hard hooves on its middle toes to help it run fast. The other fingers were noticeably shorter. Herocotherium is the next step in the development of the modern horse. 
These animals had a long tail, a short muzzle, small teeth, and a height of only 20 centimeters. Oddly enough, the deterioration of climatic conditions played an important role in the development of the future horse. 40 million years ago, the climate of North America became drier. In place of dense forests, open plains appeared savannas. They did not provide reliable shelter for future horses from predators, so the only solution was to increase the size of the body and the speed it developed. Soon the horses begin to take on their usual appearance and become Ankytheria. Ankytheria began to look like small ponies in appearance and were exactly the same in height. The hooves slowly grew together, forming three fingers. The enemies, as before, loved to feast on small horses. Only the latter, in turn, began to run faster and learned to jump high, which greatly helped them not to become an extinct species. The next link in the development of horses is the Hipparion. It was they who played an important role in the further development of the structure of graceful creatures. Hipparions looked very much like a gazelle. It was probably during this period that horses separated from them. Surprisingly, this type of horse did not change its hooves, and they remained three-toed. Only now hooves appeared on each of the fingers, which made it possible to walk on loose and mountainous surfaces. In addition, Hipparions have become more resilient. Over time, Hipparions began to live with Pliohippus, but the wet soil began to give way to steps and Pliohippus turned out to be more adaptable. Pliohippus were very different in color, which is why they laid the foundation for the development of zebras, donkeys, Kalans and Tarpa. Knew their hooves finally changed and became similar to the hooves of modern horses. Pliohippus had no obstacles left to conquer all parts of the world. They populated almost every corner of the earth. They left rich offspring, from which later descended those whom zoologists now unite in the equine family zebras, wild asses, and half donkeys wild Prowalski's horses and domestic horses of all breeds. And suddenly all the Pliohippus, as well as the Pliosippus that descended from them, disappeared. What happened? Why did all the ancient horses go extinct in North America a million years ago within a short period? This may have happened due to the continuous glaciation that the continent underwent. In Europe and Asia, two species of then still wild horses were able to survive. They existed until the time when, in addition to all other predators, they had another dangerous and ferocious enemy. Humanoid troglodyte creatures began to hunt the ancient horses. Newly erected on two limbs, not unlike animals, future humans were effective hunters. Arranging a roundup in which the entire tribe participated, they drove the animals into a deep ravine, where they finished them off with stones and spears. After the meat of the ancient horse was eaten, it was painted on the walls of the cave. All this happened during the next ice age. The increasingly harsh external environment accelerated the evolutionary process of the animal and plant world. That is why in Europe a subspecies of real horses has developed, which are quite different from their other neighbors in the genus zebras and donkeys. Primitive horses that lived 10 to 11,000 years ago differed little from modern horses. 10,000 years ago, the end of the Ice Age, three species of primitive wild horses, differing from each other in habitat, size, and physique, became the blood forefathers of modern breeds. The animals that lived in the forests were tall and big-boned. Those who lived in the steppes and on hilly plains had graceful movements and fast running. The color also depended on the habitat, from brown to yellowish sand. Today there are about 10 species of the equine family, zebras, onagers, Kalans, Kings, Dao. Some researchers believe that donkeys were domesticated before horses. 
donkeys can lift 20 to 30 percent of their own weight and are quite unpretentious, so without any exaggeration they were the economic engines of the ancient world, giving way to horses only at the turn of the era. But the Syrians bred at least three breeds of donkeys, one of them was distinguished by a special grace of gait, and therefore was highly valued by ladies. Donkeys in Hellas were symbols of fertility. Donkey the hoof facilitated the ripening of the fetus and childbirth in women. A donkey's skull hung in the garden ensured a good harvest. It was also believed that the grape harvest would be large if the donkey ate at least one bunch from the vine. And some European peoples believed that donkey tail helps against whooping cough. Donkeys were not very popular in the United States. During the gold rush, they were used by miners who needed to transport large loads cheaply. When the fever passed, the animals were simply abandoned, which is why wild donkeys still live in the southern United States. With the development of the dwarf donkey, about one meter in height, these animals began to be kept at home, like dogs or cats. The donkey's legendary stubbornness is rooted in its heightened instinct for self-preservation. When a donkey is scared, it is impossible to force him to do anything against his will. Donkeys are often kept with horses because they have a calming psychological effect on them. It was thanks to military use that small ancient horses, barely exceeding one meter at the withers, grew to modern sizes. Breeding war horses was a matter of national importance in all countries of the Old World, from the Hittites, who first used war chariots, 18th century BC, to the harsh Vikings, who preferred small, undersized horses to save space on longships. Both horses and donkeys have always been not only a means of transportation, but also a source of food, usually emergency, but sometimes regular. Let's take, for example, Kumis, a sweet and sour tonic drink made from mare's milk. It appeared about 5,500 years ago. The nomads of the Mongolian steppes were the first to make kumis. Most people in Inner Mongolia suffer from lactose intolerance, and kumis breaks down during fermentation into lactic acid, ethanol, and carbon dioxide, making kumis about the only milk drink these people can drink. The number of myths about horses cannot even be approximated. They were the basis and main attribute of most ancient civilizations, therefore they are mentioned in legends almost more often than any other animal. The horse is the last surviving genus of the once extensive equine family, Equus. If you liked the episode, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And also press the bell so as not to miss new and interesting releases from the Real Unreal channel.